Today I'm going to introduce you to a front and rear 4K dash cam. New for 2022, it's the Zen Fox U1 4K dash cam with a 4K forward facing camera and a 1080p rearward facing camera. This Zen Fox U1 4K dash cam has literally just come out for the 2022 model year and I've been very lucky to lay my hands on this two channel version. My previous dash cam fell off its mounting and broke. I shall give you a very quick unboxing, an introduction to the features, and then show you the installation in my Saab. You might ask, why do you need a dash camera? Well, my last dash cam saved me from losing my entire no claims bonus when this dipstick in a Jag pulled out in front of me and slammed on his brakes. Ouch. A few months later, I had an uninsured driver smack me in the back end. I've got a whole playlist about the repairs to that. Fortunately that was an open and shut case because I didn't have a rear dash cam at that time. But another friend of mine was the victim of a cash for crash. Now luckily he had a dash cam in his car and the dash cam footage was instrumental in one saving his no claims bonus and two helping the police catch up with a criminal gang who were performing several of these uh, scams daily. In fact, that leads me to the first of several top tips. One of the things we learnt from uh, the dealings with the police on that occasion was that uh, the gangs who carry out these cash for crash scams do pick on their victims very carefully. And one of the things they do look for is whether or not you've got a dash cam in the car. And if you have got a dash cam on show, they will move on and find, some, find an easier target. Well, that's the rear camera. It's uh, very rinky dinky, it has to be said, uh, as indeed is the front camera. It's got a cinematic widescreen. Well, I haven't used it yet, but it looks like it's big enough so that you can at least see what's going on and use the functions and probably watch some of the video back. If you'd had an incident, of course, you'd want to download the video and you'd probably end up watching it on your laptop or your computer in case you needed to edit it. It's also nice to see that it does come in a stout box and it's well protected by a foam surround which, which is great because the chances are you'll be receiving this through the post probably international post as well user manual ah a whole host of accessories that looks suspiciously like the uh, cable to go from the front to the rear a power lead which looks to be uh, a good length and would seem to be capable of being plugged into either a USB source and comes with a power socket to USB adapter. A GPS module and uh, mounting bracket that sticks to your screen. Oh, it even comes with a little tool to help you install the uh, cables, you know, and hide them behind your trim. Spare sticky pads, cable clips, what looks like a USB adapter. That's obviously one of the ways they've uh, designed it to keep it slim is instead of putting the buttons below the screen, they've put them underneath. Well, on the basis of an unboxing, so far, I'm very happy with this. It feels quite substantial too. I also ordered a Zenfox supplied micro USD card uh, with it as well, and I got a 64 gigabyte Samsung Pro. Certainly no, no cheap rubbish here. So now we'll get to installation. Before installing the micro SD card in the camera, put it into the adapter that comes with it and use your computer to format the card. Windows 10 does not allow you to format a partition to FAT32 if that partition is more than 32 gigabytes and I'm using a 64 gigabyte card. So I'm using an app called AOMEI Partition Assistant Standard Edition, which will allow me to uh, format it to FAT32. I'll link you in the description to a help page that will uh, show you what to do and where to get the app from. If you're getting value from this video don't forget to tap the like button down near the title. Mount the micro SD card in the same side of the camera as the red button with the gold pins facing rearwards like the screen. Put it in the slot and lock it into place. Take the mount and GPS module and clip it into the camera. Now I'm going to mount it up behind the interior mirror. 
obviously exactly where you mount it will depend a little bit on what car you're putting it in if you can mount it in such a way that you can see the screen above the mirror then that would be great uh, unfortunately that's not possible in this car because the mirror is mounted uh, not to the glass like it is in many other cars but to the roof structure and is therefore very close to the uh, ceiling I'm going to put the dash cam approximately here so that uh, I'm sticking it to the blackout portion of the top of the screen but the camera can see out of the clear portion which is part of the uh, wiper sweep you can of course choose to mount the camera any way you like within reason of course and subject to any local laws it does have a little bit of latitude on the mount so first of all clean the area where you're going to mount it with some um, isopropyl alcohol or some meths even even a dab of brake cleaner would do and a freshly laundered microfiber cloth and then peel off the backing paper start at one edge I'm starting at the top edge only really because it's the uh, easiest edge for me to see and then fold it down onto the screen and press hard for five or six seconds to make sure that it's well stuck power supply wise I'm just going to plug this adapter that came with the uh, dash cam into the power socket in my dashboard and just dangle the cable over the mirror into the base where it connects to for for the moment and for the purposes of this video because I did already have you can see it dangling here a uh, integrated power supply already hidden behind the headlining uh, for my previous dash cam but unfortunately I cannot reuse it for this one because it's a different type of plug this was a mini USB uh, and this dash cam takes a type C so I either need to get another another power supply module or an adapter it's easy enough to install an integrated power supply though you just it's a simple little box um, with a 12 volts input on one side with it so it'll have a wire that you can take to a 12 volt supply and a wire that comes out the other side uh, with the appropriate type of plug on it for your uh, device for the rear camera lead you could use the tool that's provided and use it to uh, get under the edge of your headlining all the way around across the top of your screen and your doors and just feed it through you might have to remove the grab handles in order to uh, be able to pull down the headlining a little bit easier but what I've done because I've got these flexible uh, cable feeding rods I've dropped the cover off the center console and fed the wire through using these uh, fishing rods through past the rear light unit and brought the cable out next to the chimsel that way the wiring's completely hidden it was actually very easy to get it through uh, and all the excess cable can just be coiled up uh, behind the headlining you don't have to have these if you wanted to do the same you could just use a, a short length of uh, twin and earth cable as your, as your fishing rod uh, with a little bit of stiffness just to push through you might have to pull the headliner down a little bit at the rear light or at the rear um, there's probably some roof supports if you click show more and expand the description below the video I'll put uh, links to tools, leads and bits and bobs that you might need and also a link to this camera on the Zenfox website with worldwide delivery the power supply plugs into the side of the base which also has the GPS receiver in it and the rear camera lead plugs into the top of the main camera body download and install the Zenfox app onto your phone apply power to the dash cam and straight away you will see what the camera sees through its front camera don't forget of course to remove the small protective tape from the lens switch off recording with the second switch use the right hand button press and hold and turn on the Wi-Fi and on your phone search for Zenfox U1 as a network connect to that network and the default password is one two three four five six seven eight and open the Zenfox app it'll ask you to click on connect camera and 
on your phone you'll be able to see a live view of exactly what the uh, camera is seeing. Using the camera rotation button we can switch between different views. We can now go to the back, connect the rear camera and use the live view to position the camera. So if I connect the rear camera, remove the screen protector and particularly you'll want to set it up so that the heated rear screen wires don't interfere with the picture. Once you've got your position of the rear camera sorted, don't forget to clean the screen before you stick it on. Now we can come back to the front and position the camera to get the best, best possible view forwards. Tilt the camera so that it's looking downwards ever so slightly. My experience with other cameras would suggest that it's better if the camera is tilted down a little bit so that it doesn't get too much sky at the top of the picture because if it does on a bright day that tends to wash out the picture so try and get a little less sky even if that means you end up with a bit more bonnet. If you've got any questions or comments put them down below in the comments section and I'll endeavour to answer them for you. Using the record button on the app stop the recording and you can then go into settings. You can scroll through and there's absolutely tons of settings there. Increase the loop recording up to five minutes. One thing I found, something I found with previous uh, dash cams, if the loop recording is short, when it stops one recording and starts the next recording, there's ever such a tiny time period of events that don't get recorded. And I, actually, and I actually had that issue, the video I showed you earlier when I hit the jag. So if you make the loop recording time longer, you get less of those. The chances of an accident or other incident falling exactly on one of those becomes much, much less. I couldn't find in the instructions why it is that it's beeping at me, but hey ho, I think it's probably just because it's on and not recording. There's an option in these settings called rear camera rotate, which you can have on or off. I'm suspecting that that enables you to rotate the image 180 degrees, which enables you then to fit the camera in the rear exactly how you want it. Doesn't matter which way up you put it. So you can make it fit to suit whatever car you've got. <laughs> I wish I'd known that before I fitted the rear camera because I would have fitted it the other way up. Notification sounds off. <laughs> Stopped it from beeping. GPS is on. Speed units. I'm going to choose miles per hour. You can change the uh, Wi-Fi name on it as well if you want to and the password. You can also put your car license plate number in. Not quite sure what benefit that gives you. So set recording going again. When you start your engine it'll start recording whilst you're driving. When you stop your engine it stops recording. Ba bum Jobs are good and so all that's left to do now is tidy up my mess of wires, which I'll do uh, off camera. And over the next couple of weeks, I'll take the car out and I'll drive around in a variety of different traffic, um, hopefully weather uh, and also daylight conditions and get a variety of videos taken and download them. And we'll, and I'll do a proper review uh, of how good the quality of recording is. I'll also try out some of the functions like the parking uh, function and see what use that is. There's something in the parking function called time lapse and I, I have something in particular in mind for that uh, which, which I'll uh, reveal in the next video when I do the full review. But so far so good. It was stoutly packed. It feels good quality, feels well made. It fits reasonably easily. Obviously, how easy it is to send the wires around your car will be dependent on which car you're fitting it to. And it seems to do the job okay. The picture quality that I was getting on my phone there uh, was very, very good. Uh, better than other cameras that I've had. So I have high hopes. In the meantime, if you got value from this video, please consider supporting the channel. And I shall see you next time.